Hi, welcome to Automate Now. My name is Marco Cruz. Today we're going to take a look at another great tool from the creator of CrowPath, and it is called Selectors Hub. It is an easy to use tool for building locators. Let's dive in. I went ahead and added the Selectors Hub extension to my browser. In this case, I'm using Chrome. If it's not showing up here, you can search it within your extensions, and you can use this pin button to make it available here. If we click here, we can see some useful information on how to get started with the tool. I'm going to be using this GoDaddy website to show you how this tool works. First, I'm gonna hit F12 to go to my developer console. Now I'm gonna take a look at this input element and inspect it. As you may know, the way we find elements using the browser console, we use Control F to look for that element. And in this case, let's say I wanna find this element, I would say forward slash forward slash input. And it shows us that we have found four input elements on this page. Then we can further narrow this down by using any of these other attributes. For example, if I want to find this element using the class name, I can simply get the class name from here, copy it, and then go down here and say class is equal to this. And we we see that we found that one particular element. Now let's take a look how we can do that using selector sub. So I'm gonna move this over here. Here we find selector sub at the very end. Click there, and here we can see some instructions on how to use it. But since I already have this element in focus. I can simply say forward slash forward slash and then we can see that it gives me a suggestion. It says input and there are four inputs. We can see it by this value here. And it also tells me what type of locator this is. In this case, we have an XPath locator. Say for example that we wanna say input and then we open the bracket. And this is one of the awesome features about this tool. It almost feels as if you're using an IDE where IntelliSense gives you suggestions as you type. If we scroll down, we can see all the different options that we can use. The one means that this will be unique. If you have anything above one, then it means there are multiple ones. So say you can just simply click here and it will automatically fill it for you. When, it, when we hit enter, we see that the element is found. It's also highlighted here on the browser. Let us switch our attention to one of these elements up here. I'm gonna inspect this element. And here we have an anchor tag inside of a list item. Again, I'm gonna go here and type forward slash forward slash and as you can see, the first option I see is A. And we can see that it's giving us suggestions for an anchor tag. It's intelligent enough to know that we're trying to interact with this element. So it's not giving us access to the entire DOM right away. So in this case, I can just say A and then open brackets and use any, any one of these locator strategies. In this case, I'm just gonna select ID, hit enter, and we can see that the element is found. What if we want to start working with relationships between these elements? So the parent for this element would be this list item. So we would do forward slash, and then type parent. And as you begin typing, it's starting to give you suggestions. So I'm just gonna select parent, and then I'm gonna type li and hit enter. And we'll see one matching element found. Here's another neat thing about this tool. You can click on this element to begin working with this element. So if I remove this, and I say forward slash forward slash, now it's giving me suggestions for, for a list item because I have switched focus to this element by clicking on it. So if I say list item, li, then open brackets, and as we can see, there are no unique elements for this. So in this case, I'm gonna remove that bracket and just hit enter, and we have found 236 elements, but we want this one. So what we'll do, we're going to use the index. The developer tools have given us the index here, 88. This came up as soon as I hit enter. So watch this again. If I remove this, that index went away, right? But if I say forward slash forward slash li and I hit enter, now every single li is being labeled with an index. So I can use that index to reference that element. So if I go to the beginning here and I say open brackets, immediately selector sub gives me the suggestion of using in index 88. If I click that and I hit enter, now we have found one matching element. Next, let's take a look at siblings. So let's take a look at, for example, the, the sibling for this element would be this one. So I can say forward slash following, and as soon as I start typing, I start to see suggestions. In this case, following sibling, or just following. So I'm gonna select following sibling, and then I'm gonna say li, and then open and close brackets, and hit the number one to select the very first sibling. In this case, we have found this sibling here. And we can know that by looking at the ID here. The ID, if we look at this element here, we see that the ID ends with this 5C61, and we have 5C61. Something else to keep in mind with this tool is 
is that you can make your element locators as robust as you want. For example, let's take a look at this sign in button here. Four slash four slash fan open brackets. And I'm going to go where the text is equal to sign in. And then we found one element. If I want to add more to it, I can do open bracket and I get more options. So in this case, I can say, for example, the class is equal to text. Hit enter, we found the same element. But in this case, this will be more robust in case you have some flaky tests. All right, so we cover XPath. Let us now take a look at CSS. We can also build CSS selectors on the same input box here. Let's take a look at one of these elements. We're going to go down here, select this, WordPress. And in this case, I'm going to select by ID, perhaps. And I'm going to say, we know that we start with a hash symbol and then ID. We select that. And as you can see, when we, as soon as we type the hash symbol, we see the options are CSS. It tells me right here that this is the CSS element and there's one. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna hit enter, we found the element. We can also do this for class. For example, we have a class name for this element here and I'm gonna say dot and then we see card and I'm gonna do open brackets and then I'm gonna say ID is equal to that and then I hit enter and we found the same element. Sometimes the class attribute may have multiple class names in it. For example, this element here, we see that there are three different classes here. So the space represents a different class. So in this case, I'm gonna say dot, and then select this. And as we can see, it went ahead and added the dots where the spaces normally goes. This is something that before we had to manually go in there and do it, but this tool is actually doing it for us. So we can go here and then make it unique by selecting one of these items to find that element here, and it's highlighted on our screen. So this is one of the many ways in which this tool makes our jobs a whole lot easier. Once you have your selector ready, you can double click this box and it copies it to the clipboard or you can click this button here. This tool is also useful for verifying SVG elements. Let's scroll to the top of the screen and find one of those. In this case, we're going to take a look at this one here. And we can see here on the DOM that this is under an SVG tag. And if I go here, it tells me that this is an SVG element. I'm going to delete that and say four slash four slash and it's telling me the locator for that element. The same thing goes for elements that may be inside of a frame or an iframe. You will be able to see here where the element is located. Okay, so what if you have some tests that may have failed and you want to verify some of the locator strategies that you have? In this case, I have a locator here. I'm going to copy this over here to test it. And then when I hit enter, it's telling me that it's missing a bracket. If I look at the structure of this, the bracket is missing at the end. I'm going to add it and hit enter. And now it highlights on the screen the element. We can go further by removing this parentheses, for example, and we hit enter, and it's telling us exactly what's missing. So this is great because it's doing some syntax validation, and it's perfect for people who may be just getting started with CSS or XPath. This tool is going to help them to get on the right path. If you would like to learn more about this tool, head on over to selectorshub.com. There you will find instructional videos and information about this tool. It has support for the major browsers. I would like to give a shout out to Sanjay Kumar for developing such a great tool. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends.